The Hawker Hurricane has always lived in the shadow of its contemporary counterpart, the Spitfire, and has never truly been given the praise it has deserved. This is a story of the plane that would become the workhorse of the RAF in its darkest hour. The Hurricane evolved from a string of biplanes designed by Hawker in the 1920s. These biplanes would reach its absolute potential with the Hawker Fury, which first flew in 1931. Realising that biplanes are coming obsolete and were not the way of the future, Sidney Kemp developed the Hurricane on a private venture. He took the fuselage of the Fury and combined it with a new tail and monoplane design, which included a retractable undercarriage and carried the Rolls Royce Go Shawk engine. It still retained the metal tube construction with fabric covering instead of the far more complicated stressed metal fuselage. Hence, the Hurricane had a biplane structure but a monoplane layout. In the early years of 1934, the design was modified so the plane could carry the Rolls Royce PV 12 Merlin engine. By June of 1934, a 110 scale model had been built for testing in the National Physics Laboratory, and on the 4th of September 1934, the design was submitted to the Air Ministry. Hawker didn't wait for a reply and sent the drawing straight to the Air Experimental Shop. On January 10th, 1935, with a wooden mock-up completed, a conference was held at Kingston between the Air Ministry and Hawker, and on the 21st of February, 1935, the contract was issued to Hawker for one high-speed monoplane to meet Air Ministry specification F-3634. Later that year, on November 6th, flying out of Brooklyn's aerodrome, the prototype flew for the first time with Hawker's test chief pilot, George Bulmer, at the controls. During February 1936, further flight testing was undertaken at RAF Marlesham Heath, and on the 3rd of June that year, the Air Ministry placed an order for 600 planes. On the 27th of June, the Air Ministry sanctioned it the Hurricane, and later that year, on the 12th of October, the first production Hurricane made its flight. During the January of 1938, the first Hurricanes came off the production line and were delivered to RAF Squadron 111 the first squadron to receive these brand new monoplanes, and by the end of 1938, the RAF had taken delivery to over 200 Hurricanes. The Hurricane had a few claims to fame, as it was the first monoplane to go into formal RAF service, and the RAF's first operational fighter with a retractable undercarriage, enclosed cockpit, and a speed greater than 300 miles per hour in level flight. By September the 3rd, two days after the outbreak of World War II, the RAF had 18 fighter squadrons equipped with Hurricanes. At the outbreak of war, four hurricane squadrons were sent to France and during October 1939, Pilot Officer Mould of No. 1 Squadron downed a DO-17 reconnaissance plane west of Toul, claiming the first RAF victory of the war and the hurricane's first kill. With the Nazi invasion of France in 1940, three more hurricane squadrons were rushed over the channel to France to help defend the skies. As a result, the Hurricane bore the brunt of the invasion, even though they put out one heck of a battle, they were simply outnumbered by German fighters. By the end of the campaign, the RAF had lost a staggering 959 aircraft of all types. Approximately 386 of these were Hurricanes. By the end of June, what was left of the Hurricane squadrons were back in England and rebuilding gear and gearing up for what would be known as the Battle of Britain. This battle would prove to be the Hurricane's golden hour. At the start of the battle on the 1st of July, the RAF had 29 operational hurricane units, 19 Spitfire squadrons, and two months later, at the peak of the battle, the RAF could account for 30 hurricane squadrons, 18 Spitfires, and 10 other fighter squadrons. Although it's often overshadowed by the Spitfire, the hurricane proved to be just as valuable during Britain's darkest hour, accounting for over 80% of all aerial victories. This is more than all other defences, Grand and Air, combined. And by the end of the battle, some 1,715 Hurricanes had participated, this being the highest of all units. Without it, Britain would be in turmoil, showing just how influential this aircraft was in turning the tide of the war. It is also valuable to note that it was a Hurricane pilot that won Fighter Command's only Victoria Cross of the war. On the 16th of August 1940, Flight Lieutenant J.B. Nookerson of No. 249 Squadron was in desperate combat against Luftwaffe Raiders. Fired on by the BF-110, Nicholson was hit and wounded in the eye, and his plane had been hit and was alive. Managing to free himself and about to bail from the burning plane, Nicholson caught eye of a BF-109 and got back into the plane. Somehow he managed to destroy the German fighter and escape his burning plane. 
Nicholson was badly burnt on the hands and face. Awarded the Victoria Cross later that month, Nicholson will return back to the fight before being shot down during May of 1945. By September 1940, Mark II's were arriving RAF squadron, but it had been realised that the Hurricane was no match for modern fighters. As a result, the Hurricanes were sent to North Africa, as well as becoming the primary British fighter in Burma. Back home, it was modified into various roles. The Harry Bomber was designed, carrying two 250 pounds or two 500 pound bombs underneath its wings, as well as the Grand Attack variant with its tank busting capabilities. Then in 1943, Hawker developed the Hurricane to be able to carry rockets underneath its wings. Number 137 Squadron took these rocket carrying Hurricanes into battle for the first time during September 1943, making the Hurricane the first single seater fighter to employ rockets. An extremely important variant of the Hurricane was the Sea Hurricane. When German long-range bombers started to bomb convoys in the Atlantic, transporting vital supplies to Britain, Britain needed a solution. The result was the Sea Hurricane. Modified Hurricanes with ca catapult and arrestor hook, so whenever a bomber came near, the Hurricanes could be launched into air to fight the threat off. The only shortcoming was that the Hurricane could not land back on the ship and the pilot was left with no other choice but to ditch in the water. This meant unless they could land near the convoy, the convoy had no way of knowing where the plane had crashed, thus making survival very slim for pilots. From 1941, the Royal Navy introduced these tactics with the Merchant Ship Fighter Unit and Fleet Air Arm, all using Sea Hurricanes. However, by 1943, the Sea Hurricane was considered inadequate for the job and they started to disappear from service. In the end, hurricanes were used in the European theatre until the end of 1944, and so at the end of the war in the Far East, with the last RAF squadron using Hurricane Mark IVs until January 1947. In total, over 14,000 were built in Britain and Canada under licence, and were exported to countries all around the world. Nearly some 3,000 alone were sent to the Soviet Union. It is often forgotten, but nevertheless, its contribution to the war effort must not be underestimated. It is a plan that was so decisive in stopping the Nazi war machine. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment for more future content like this.